the claim comes back, the settlement offer comes back that you're not happy with, you can bring it back to us. And the claims committee was made up of what? Karen, the Board of Governors? Yes. Will actually review the claim. And many times it's been, it's been overturned and settled in favor of the town. Many times. So that's available to you. You get the Board of Governors and then you get a representation from um, the Association of Towns also because they're your they're your association and then a board member mm -hmm. who is a town supervisor so that you have a peer um, when you're reviewing the claim. So why don't you talk a little bit about NINER? I mean, okay. Because that, that's the biggest right, new, right. newbie out there. Okay. Yeah. So I did bring um, a question and answer about NIMER in case you, you, you are a little bit concerned about a reciprocal. Um, a reciprocal is a little bit different because we do charge a capitalization fee. We don't have the outside stockholders like your other insurance companies have. When you join NIMER, you'll see that there's a capital fee that you have to pay when you join and it's 10% of your premium and we allow you to pay it over five years. What NIMER has been able to do because you're considered owners of the company, you are capitalizing the company, is we've done financially well. So we've started to return that capitalization to our members and then after that we return the interest that accrued on that capital. We have a board of governors as, as Bill said and our board of governors is made up of town supervisors, village mayors, uh, county administrators, so it's a board of your peers that makes up the 12 people of that board and then we have as our attorney in fact part of that board sitting at the bottom is the Association of Towns, the Conference of Mayors and the Association of Counties. Um, we're very strong in risk management. We want to make sure that when you have claims or when we come out to visit that you're avoiding or you're trying to do everything possible that you can to avoid a claim. Right. Um, the one thing that uh, we found over the past two years is we've had to raise the rates on the auto because who would have thought distracted driving has just blown out of proportion. And it's not only, at, it's not only out there with our teenagers, it's our municipalities too. It's it's driving the rates up. So instead of sitting back and continuing to, to raise those rates, our department put together a distracted driving program. We did a mailing to everybody and I brought actually brought you a packet. Whether you decide to come on board with NIMA or not, actually I do want to um, if you want to hand out the Q and A because mm -hmm. later on after I leave you'll be saying, What did she say? We're outside, I was looking at the bird or whatever. So we, we, we have a Q and A on NIMA. It talks about the capitalization I talked about, what a reciprocal is, um, and why we cho chose to be set up the way we are. So the distracted driving program that we put together is we sent everybody um, a sample resolution. If you wanted to adopt a resolution to say we decide to be safe, safe drivers and we're all going to train once a year, an hour or two on some kind of distracted driving program. Um, and we gave your certificates in the, in the packet to say, you know, to hand them out to everybody after they complete it. We give you the PowerPoint presentation or we'll come out and we'll do it for you. And we don't say it has to be our PowerPoint, just some kind of training. Um, even if you do the six hour defensive driving, of course that's above and beyond. But unfortunately, distracted driving is... is right number one. Yeah, it is. And our auto claims prove it. So I brought you a packet. I'll just give you um, the one packet. I'm sorry for that. Okay. It's the, on two sides, so um, I actually have a couple. I brought them. You guys are going to throw this all away. When you so, leave. how does the distracted <laughs> driving training go for the, uh, like for the town of Franklin? Who would, who would have to take that? Anybody who drives a municipal vehicle. Okay. And it doesn't hurt if you um, even drive your own vehicle for town, town business, or if you don't drive for the town and you come to the training and we're doing it at the town, we're not going to say, oh, you don't drive a vehicle, you can't be here. So anybody okay, is right. welcome. Right. Anyone, uh, even volunteers who, who may work for the town are welcome. We don't we don't discriminate sure. when we come oh. out to do the training. Um, so I also... It'd probably be good to get, I don't know, you have adjoining towns too. You know, get oh yeah, we love the opportunity together. to do more than right. one town at a time. Mm -hmm. That's great. You had the list of the right. municipalities yep. that yep. we have. We yeah, so it wouldn't be hard to get training. two or three together to, mm -hmm. no, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the, in the fall, we do a lot of snow and ice safety training. We have somebody who works for the Department of oh, Transportation okay. do training, uh, Rick Stoll. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before. 
but we contract with him and he comes out and does training for the DPW drivers who have salt, sand, plow, and all of that, and has a lot of good tips for them. Did you get your keys, Jack? No, uh, the Board of Assessment Review is still finishing up. So we're having a fresh air meeting. <laughs> And in the summer, we do a lot of parks and recreation. Do you have a oh. rec program? I didn't see anything. We do have the, do? the village, the town does have a rec program. Okay. Uh, but well, we talk about the counselors and the supervision oh. and, and okay. different things about rec programs, if they're bringing them on a trip. And we have sample um, permission slips that we, we think that can be helpful if, oh. if you know, you're There's going on a trip and something happens, just to prevent liability yeah, on I your side. I think that's under the village more than it yeah. is the town. Mm -hmm. Town finances a lot of it. Oh, you do. So you could potentially be brought into. <clears throat> right, yeah, oh, sure. It's a shotgun effect. Oh, Everything sure. happens. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to be put in. I mean, that's everybody. just a fact. And then it, it diminishes. <coughs> yes. um, but yep. we're big on risk transfer. So if you are contracting out with a contractor, whether it be paving or even somebody painting right. or even your rec program, we really feel you should have some kind of a contract in place. We take a look at those contracts, we take a mm -hmm. look at the certificates as well as many, they provide a lot of that um, information for you too. There are webinars, there's a lot of on-site training, and we actually do a whole orientation on all of the services we have to offer if you decide to join the NIMA program. So I'm just going to turn it over to the nitty-gritty, the, 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 the coverage part for, right. for Bill. Right. And this is, a, um, if you want to pass this around, that's some of our services that we provide for, for risk management. I don't want to give you too much. You know what? I'm going to give the clerk a folder. Okay. This is everything, all, oh, everything about NARA. Awesome. If you want to share it with everyone. Yeah. 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 That would be nice to have. You can open the back page and stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got another one. Anybody, you want to spare? Sure. So I, want to just take, I want to take the three because I spent, I spent some time. I was here probably twice. Both times I was here, I was running like crazy. And Mark and I went through virtually everything right. we met with me. Yep. And, and so I do want to take you through what we found. I want to take you through the insurance proposal. And it will give you the opportunity to ask some questions. So, you know. If you go to page three, and I'm going to hop around here a little bit, this, this is going to be your service team. I'm here at the top, mm -hmm. Deb Smith, Kelly McGowan, Lisa McCall. I've heard some of those names on your answer sheet. Yep. And Kelly, <laughs> Kelly's in Delhi, so she probably would be the one Deb to handle. Deb Smith, I've heard her name. Yep. Yep. And Lisa McCall, she's in Cooperstown, so oh. she may help out too, but primarily mm -hmm. Kelly's going to be the person who's going to service your account if you need ID cards, if you need certificates of insurance, if you need whatever, she's going to get it to you, okay? You can see we have a toll-free hotline for claims, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Um, you can, you can just, you know, you can call us. We are Nimer agent, a Nimer servicing rep. Um, we're one of five in the state. Oh. And, um, you know, we've been probably one of the first Nimer service reps. Yeah, we we're the first. Oh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> if you go to page 19, and I'm going to kind of flip well, around you here. You are flipping around, you're ready. Just about the end. Yeah, because I'm just giving you the bottom line. Yeah, yeah I want okay. everybody. You know, if I don't if I don't start there, right. you're going to sneak your way there anyway. We're going right? to sneak there anyway. Right. right. So it's twenty six thousand six forty five seventy eight cents. Now, here's here's what we know. We've got different numbers. We do twenty eight. Twenty eight. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said twenty six. Did I say you did? Yeah. Twenty six. It's twenty eight. We'll okay, see, we just made two thousand dollars. Yeah. Twenty eight six forty five. Twenty six. Seventy eight cents. Right. Seventy eight cents. So I'll give you that. <laughs> Here's what we know. We know that you're paying in fourteen fifty. We never found your per, your oh, okay. policy. You know, we never got a copy of your current yeah. policy. No. So I don't. I don't. I think for I. No, no. I, I called the air and he was going to send one. We oh, never, really? yeah. we never oh, okay. got it. All never we got, got okay. was the fourteen fifteen policy. We had an old one. All yeah. right. So I don't know where you're at price wise now, right. but I can tell you when I look at the fourteen fifteen. No, plus ten percent, right? 
for what? For the getting it installed. That's included. That's in included. Well, that's that's in included there. your price. So this price is between <clears throat> eight and nine thousand dollars less than what you were paying in right. fourteen or fifty. Okay. And so with that, what I want to do is I want to hand out this because what this is going to show you, I, I what I want to take the mystery out of is I don't want you to think we're going to be a low number just to turn around and write your insurance coverage, okay? And so the top chart shows, and, and Karen mentioned in 2001, you can see where the rate started to climb, but that was a problem that we had in the markets because when the towers went down, we had a big problem with insurance markets. But you can see from like 04, moving forward to current, and you can see our little bump in the auto rate, <clears throat> the rates have held or they held flat or what they have done is they have taken a decrease which really doesn't show okay? your business has grown tremendously go to the second go to the second chart okay we're the largest insurer of municipalities in the state in a short right. period of time yep. okay and i want you to see that now you're going to ask me what the third chart is i'm going to tell you i don't know it's, oh, it's yeah. a conglomeration of a, an excel it all looks good except 94. <laughs> <laughs> 94 is a glitch yeah <clears throat> i'm not sure what i don't know you know i'm, I'm not sure how that pans out right. but the top two charts really tell you the story from a rate standpoint and a growth standpoint mm -hmm. okay for a new york based company now let's go back to the proposal i didn't want you to think i was just throwing this out here today. To, to write your no, this year sure. and then yeah, next year. It no, it, if you threw it out, it'd be flying all over. You just hand it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go to page. Let's go to page five. Okay. Backtrack. Yeah, I'm backtrack. Keeping you on your toes, Jeff. Oh, don't do that. I'm not a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> so, page five. The top graph says 1.8 million dollars of. Blanket insurance coverage with a $500 deductible, a million dollars of flood, a million dollars of earthquake coverage. 1.8 million, and I actually took on my own and raised some of your content values because I think you're underinsured, to be honest with you. Okay? Mm -hmm. But really, what that $1.8 million means is that's the amount of insurance you would have if you had any one single given loss at any one time. Okay? And so they're taking the, the they're taking the aggregate of the building values and contents values and pulling them together. Because you might lose this building, but you're highly unlikely to lose this one at the same time. You won't lose. You could lose this one, but not probably. Not that one, right? Okay. And so <clears throat> with your blanket insurance, mm -hmm. what what I want to point out is it covers everything. Okay. I think you've got buildings here that are low value. That's what my gut tells me when I look at the square footage. The low, low prices we have on it. Low values on the insurance. Right. Okay. Yes. So here's how we're going to address Yeah, this alone would be by the 1.8 we built. Oh, you think so? Well, it was 400 and some, I think, when they built it back in the 84. It, you're, looking at, you're looking at roughly 100 to $150 a square foot. Okay. So what we're what we're going to do with Nimer mm -hmm. is we're going to come in here probably what in the first four to six months. This is a problem. I want I want don't want to say that but it's in the calendar year now and here is June so I would say by 2018. By early 2018. For an appraisal. We're going to send a third party property appraisal company out here called CBiz and they will evaluate all of your buildings and they will determine what the appropriate replacement cost is. It's about a $6,000 value that's no additional cost to you as a subscriber. And I'm also going to tell you that the other carriers, because our agency represents a number, a number of them, don't offer this service. What they'll tell you is, is we can do this in our agency with a Marshall and Swift uh, calculator. And the reality is, I can do that too, but the information that's in the property appraisal <coughs> report is far greater. Okay? So, my, my thought, when I looked at this, here's what I found. I found, on your current policy, I didn't see where your chlorine building was listed on your current policy. Oh. Should no, I, I don't know. I didn't find, again, I had a 14, 15 policy. I didn't see it on there. Well, if it wasn't on then, I'm... The other thing is, is I'm showing contents coverage um, 
in location 3-1. I'm showing contents coverage at 138 Church Street in a room, an old school building. And I don't know if you have anything in there or not, but you're paying for contents coverage in there now. What's this in there? Whatever. I wonder if it's Is that uh, Hall? Green? Is that the old museum property? At Treadwell? Church. No, Franklin. Church. Not Treadwell. Roman Treadwell is quite a frame. Right. Church Street. No, there's no, yeah, there's no, it's got to be the one up in Treadwell. Yeah. 138 Church. Right. So that is a, a Treadwell. In Tre yeah. Up in Treadwell. So you do have yes. stuff in here. We're going to say yes? We do? Okay. I think so. Well, that's where, I wonder if this is to cover the museum and stuff. Church Street, Treadwell? There's, there's no. Old school, old school. Is that possible the for the museum? Is that part of the, the museum? Trella, Kellogg, is the, uh, the that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be it in the old school. Yeah. I think so. The old school is a private home. Well, no, they the mean the old school. Well, the, old, the old new school. Yeah. yeah. Right, the new oh, ginseng right. pharma. <laughs> the, ginseng. Yeah. the new old school. The they didn't have a room there. They did have a room in there. And that town had a room in there? Well, well, no, the, it's under the town insurance, but, but the, the Kellogg, Kellogg Foundation pays for that insurance. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so that that's probably is. what it is. Yes, there is. So yes. I, I don't know. I, I didn't I'd see it. But Kellogg pays for it. It shouldn't be listed. Well, yeah, but it's in our policy. So it would they be listed. They pay us. They pay. They pay whatever they, they the pay cost the of this part okay. of the premium. Yeah, that's from the They're AL Kellogg. Okay. Yep. The other Foundation. thing is, is I didn't see your shed out back on the policy either. Okay, well, that's just an empty oh. shed right now. Uh, it's going to have a generator on it. Maybe it does have a generator on it. So that, right, well that probably... So I didn't see those on it, I just pointed that out. Yep. Now, page 7 and page 8 are property extensions. And these are additional coverages that go along with the property policy should you sustain a property loss. And they work in one of two ways. The first way that they're going to work is they're going to give you additional coverage. So for example, if you look at sewer and drain backup, most, most property policies are going to exclude sewer and drain backup. You're going to get sewer and drain backup on our policy, so if it backs up into your building, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna take care of that, okay? The other thing is, is if you have a loss in this building and you're unable to use the building for governmental services like you might do, and we need to rent you a facility, that extra expense is part of it for 250000 and so, we would, we would rent a facility, run a temporary heat, maybe communication equipment. All of these additional items are extra money, and we're going to pay extra expense yeah. to get that done. I don't want to go through every right. one of them. Right. I can tell you that they have upgraded their property extensions probably four or five years ago. They took the best extensions they could find, and that's what we have in our package. Okay. Mm -hmm. You go to page nine. This is your boiler and machinery coverage now. A building has systems and equipment. You have heating systems, ventilation, air conditioning equipment, um, electrical panel boxes, and you can have a loss occur to one of these systems. A boiler can explode or rupture. I know you have a boiler in here. Yes, you do. Okay. This coverage applies for any kind of loss you sustain except for a wear and tear. Okay. And I like the way, what I like to say is, if lightning strikes the tree across the street and blows out your electrical panel, never hits your building, we're going to fix your electrical panel. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you roll over to page, the next page is your general liability. Now, this is a policy that's important because. What page number? 10. 10. Okay? This is a policy that's important because it's providing bodily injury and property damage, which is a broken. That's a broken arm, a broken leg. Um, is it really? Sorry. Should have service. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> if you got the right phone call. I've got full bars. <laughs> okay. So general liability is going to give you bodily injury and property damage. Someone's going to allege that the town is negligent and they've sustained a broken leg. You've done something negligent and damaged their property. It could be a personal injury claim, which is different. Personal injury is not a broken leg. Personal injury is slander, liable. You said something that's hurt my feelings. Uh, products and completed operations. A product is anything that the town owns and relinquishes or sets, uh, turns over to somebody else. And completed operations is a coverage where the town is performing a normal course of operations on somebody else's property 
and then you finish the job and you leave and we end up in a lawsuit out of the work that was performed. And that can happen with a highway department who happens to go on somebody else's property to right. handle a water issue or something like that. Okay. Or a tree issue. A tree issue. Okay. <laughs> we yep. just got a letter to that effect. Okay. <laughs> You have a medical expense coverage of five grand, which really tips up. I'd call that the first aid kit on the policy. Yeah, right. You know, and it's we don't have to have a lawsuit, but what we're going to do is pick up for medical expenses up to the limit. Employee benefits liability. So if you have an employee sue the board in regards to, uh, they're saying that the board has mismanaged a benefit program. The employee is not entitled. They're not receiving a benefit that they're entitled to. And then the last one is you have a limited pollution liability, and, and this is on our policy. I think you're going to probably find it's excluded on your current policy, but we have a limited pollution liability exclusion that would pick up pollution coverage and pollution cleanup for a million dollars if you're brought into a suit and claim out of your water operations. Okay. And that and that's really basically where it starts. Yeah, there is the water operation. You mean like the trouble water? water. Wow. Okay. okay, trouble water. That that particular endorsement is, is for specified types of events that might happen to cause a pollution event. And Bill talked about the appeals mm -hmm. procedure that NIMA has. Right. We actually um, developed that coverage because we had an appeal come oh. from one of our towns and we realized that for water and sewer we were lacking some coverage for a, a sudden and accidental event. Obviously, we're not looking to cover things that have been, the types of pollution that have been seeping in for right. years and years and years in the class, a, class action lawsuit. <clears throat> so that is our own coverage that Nimer is, has developed, and it was as a result of an appeal. So we said, yeah, you know what, let's, let's add this on. Mm -hmm. We actually have a couple, another one is unsafe building, uh, demolition of an unsafe building. <laughs> demolish a building, they went through all the proper channels and they took the building down and then the, 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 the landowner still, the property owner still came back and sued them. Now if you took the wrong building down on your liability policy, you'd be covered. But you took the right building down, it was an intentional act, and intentional acts are excluded under all general liability policies. So the town supervisor called me and she was so mad wow. and she, I said, but bring it to the appeals. So we developed the, un, uh, the demolition, demolition of an unsafe building. We would provide defense for you if somebody well, wanted to sue you. So. I'll go check on that. So that's what we try to do as an armor. We listen to you and um, so sorry about that. No, you're fine. So page 11 is your business auto liability coverage and you can see the limits are listed in the top. <laughs> If you look at uh, personal injury protection at 50000 that is New York State minimum limits, and that will cover for anyone that is injured in, on, or around your vehicle or pedestrian in a strike, not your employees because they're covered under workers' comp. Then on our proposal, you have $100,000 of additional coverage, so if the first layer is exhausted, the second layer kicks in. You have Obel, which is optional basic economic loss. It pays up to twenty-five thousand for anyone who has lost their wages or ability to work, and they're, and they're looking for money. Medical payments at ten thousand dollars. Anyone who was injured in, on, or around the vehicle while working on the vehicle, employee not covered. Okay, that's a workers' comp. Uh, supplementary uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage at a million dollars. Basically says we have been involved in an accident. Uh, we have sustained bodily injury, property damage. We are not the at-fault driver, but the at-fault driver does not have insurance or enough insurance to cover our loss. And so we can put that claim back onto our policy. We're looking to subrogate at that point against the at-fault driver. I don't know if we're going to get anything. But, right, right. But we're going back after them. Hired auto is if you rent a vehicle, you're going to get a million dollars of coverage. Non-owned auto liability picks up for you as board members who are using your personal vehicle for town business if you're involved in an accident and, and there's liability that you're responsible for your policy will pay first once it's exhausted this policy is going to kick now in. back on the supplemental uninsured you know, the hired auto now with that <coughs> like we rent you know backhoe not backhoe uh, excavator and uh that's, wood. no that's later on that's later on okay. yeah. Yeah. This is just, yep. Yep. So then if you look at the vehicle list below it, and, and we went through them, oh, okay. Mark yep. and I went through all the vehicles, you're going to see that, like, vehicle, the first vehicle is your 2016 Ram 5500. Mm -hmm. Auto physical damage is on the inland marine, so the liability is on the auto policy. 
the physical damage for that vehicle is on the Inland Marine. If you go down to your F-350, your 2011 F-350, yep. you have a $500 deductible for compound collision. So if that vehicle is damaged because it's not a heavy truck, the, the physical damage is covered on the auto policy. Okay? So if you roll over to page 13, this is our inland marine, this is our equipment form, and you're going to see at the top, auto physical damage, 515,000 uh, for heavy truck equipment, contractor's equipment, 961, radios at 16,000, small tools and equipment with a maximum limit of $1,000, there's a $17,000 limit. I think you're underinsured on that, to be honest with you. I think you need a $100,000 limit in there when you start looking at all the hand tools that you have. Okay. Electronic. Don't tell our road superintendent. No. I, I think you need it because you've got a lot of equipment in there. Well, uh, when you're talking the air compressor, which we just got upgraded, that would be $70,000. Got a lot of stuff. Gold. Yeah. <laughs> EDP yeah. equipment, at, which is your computers at $2,600. And you can see the list of it is listed below. Plus, we give, the, we give an automatic $75,000 on your electronic data processing equipment. So we give that up front. And then if you have above and beyond that, you should have it scheduled in there. So I don't think you can they might do that. But they're, we're also giving them 100000 to rent a quick. Rental, yeah, Jeff, if you're going to rent a piece of equipment, you're going to get a hundred or 150000 on the policy oh. to cover that automatically. If you need more, we can add to it. It's not that expensive to add. Because right, we, like the uh, brush tractor, that was... Oh, it's probably a sixty seventy thousand dollar track. Yeah, we give you rent or borrow. So okay. we automatically oh, always too. have a hundred thousand of rent uh, or borrow. Sharing, okay. shared services yep. and stuff. Yep. Where they swap track you know, trucks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Usually our drivers, our, our equipment doesn't go without your operators. Our operators. That's 